All right, welcome back to Level Construction. In this video, Logan is going to continue with the placing of static meshes. The first thing I'm going to do is to put an elevator setup in the other room. If you remember, we have this space cut out for a lift, but we didn't actually place one in. We now know how we want the lifts to be positioned, so I'm going to steal the lift and its relevant supports from this side and move everything over to the other side. So let me find a good view for selecting things. I'm going to grab a top view. The pieces that I want are these support columns, the I-beams behind it, or at least one of the I-beams, and of course the lift itself. So let's see what we can do. Let me grab the top view and very carefully drag a selection around the supports, the lift, and the very front of those I-beams. If I do it right, I'll grab the I-beams and not the support meshes behind them. Very nice. So we can take these meshes and alt, drag to duplicate over to the other side where we need our other lift. So let's move our view over in place here. And let's see, let's zoom in a little bit. And the first thing we need to do is to rotate 90 degrees so we can stick this system to the wall. And looking at that, we have this one defined line here that we need to put the uh, I-beams up against to line everything up. So let's slide this back. As a matter of fact, to align it, we need to set it up. And looking at my drag grid, it's not letting me hit the exact center, so I'm going to need to drop that down. And by the look of it, possibly down all the way to 2, because it wasn't letting me get the dead center of that one brush. But a drag grid of 2 is more than ample, so we'll set that up. We'll also slide this back just so that the I-beams are touching the wall. And I think that is exactly what I was looking for for the lift's alignment here. Now what I need to do is to come up with a final connecting floor piece that gets us all the way over to the lift. So what I'll do is I'll grab the lift itself and move it up so that I can tell where I need to be in Z when I make the, uh, the final piece. And before I do that, um, I would almost rather it be on a grid of 16. Let me turn my drag, drag grid back up. Let's turn it back up to 16. And I'm snapping in between lines. Let me see how friendly a line is going to be. If we align and move back just to grid. Okay, so it'd be perfectly helpful. Uh, maybe it's not. It's going to snap back here. That's what I get for moving in a grid size of 2 without looking. Um, before I do anything, let me fix my uh, positioning along the pillars. I'm probably going to need one to get those since there's such a tight tolerance on those pillars. And then let me change the drag grid back to 16. And now we can get both the alignment in both directions. So all in the fun of remembering how to drag grad, or drag <laughs> snap. So if we move this up, looking for a good view. I don't. This view is the view I need, but there's too many meshes. So once again, what I'll probably do is grab these two, show only those meshes. And looking at it, I think that's um, that should do nicely for centering. And it actually looks about right. Let me do this. Move it up. Um, there we go. Very top of the mesh, yep. very top of the walkway. All right, let's bring everything back. And now I have the perfect sizing to fill in this gap. So the mesh we're going to use is one of these straight floor pieces. I think the most convenient one will probably be maybe this one over here, the straight section. So we'll drag, duplicate, and move it over here. Then I'm going to swing it around 180 degrees since I have a more convenient positioning edge where I can snap it right into place onto this 90 degree mesh. Now there's, let's see, there's a lot of things in view so let me grab just the three relevant meshes. The lift, the straight walk piece, and the 90 degree walk piece. We'll show only those meshes and then we'll figure out what measurements we need to hit. So we can start on this far edge from the 90 degree piece and measure out, let's see, I might actually drop the gray grid just a little bit because I don't like how large that gap would be. Let me see what a grid of 8 would give us. If we drop the drag grid down to 8 to remeasure, that gives us possibilities like 176, which is too far, or 168, which looks like it'd be really nice. So let's figure out what we would need for the scale on that. So 168 divided by 256 gives us point 65625. We'll let Unreal Ed do some rounding and drop that down to 65663. Sorry, 6563. And that gives us a very nice gap going out to the lift. So let's bring all of our meshes, all of our actors back now. And looking at that, I think that fits in really nicely. That's got yeah. our support pieces and then the lift fitting very nicely into a, a nice cutout area. Very nice, very nice. So that leads us on to the second part of this room. 
we need to put in a system of walls. First and uh, most importantly, we need a wall to divide the two rooms because we've got that edge started with these door pieces. But we need to put some meshes in to finish a wall across this side. And it would be nice to f kind of follow the contour of these curved pieces and maybe even fill in the, the uh, three, three sides of this room in with a, uh, a wall system. So what I'm going to do is let's load the static mesh browser and let's find some wall pieces. Let me see if I've got the mesh loaded or the package loaded. Um, LT walls is what I'm looking for. And the mesh is going to be these uh, wall frames. Beginning, I think, with uh, wall frame 02, or excuse me, wind frame 02. So that's going to be the first piece. Let me add that in. And all of these pieces are going to be filled with uh, glass. So I'll need to add in both the mesh and the glass. I'm going to add them to the floor because I want to align the piece of glass inside the mesh before I begin to move, rotate, and scale it into place. That'll be far more convenient than adding in the glass second after we have a whole bunch of arbitrary scaling taking place. So that's going to be the mainframe mesh, and I need to fit the uh, glass into it. So I'll move over. The next mesh over is windframe 02A, which is the sheet of glass which fits inside this mesh. So we'll add that in as well. And now to get them aligned more easily, I'm going to select both of them and show only those uh, meshes. So now in a front view, we could very easily take the glass mesh and line it up. It's actually set up so that the pivot, if placed in the corner, will align the glass mesh properly inside the frame. Cool. Let me also grab a uh, top view to make sure that it's centered up nicely. So that gives us exactly what we need for this style of mesh. And the next thing we'll need, before I even move this into place, is I need to get the corner piece in place. Because what we need to do is to bridge the gap in width from this doorway over to whatever gives this curved wall. And that means I need to know what size the curved wall is actually going to be. So let me also drop in the curved wall system, which is going to be wind frame 05 and then wind frame 05A. So let's drop these into place as well. Let's go right next to the next to this mesh and add in wind frame 05. And we need the glass to it as well, so we'll grab wind, wind frame 05A. We'll place that as well. Now let me grab both wind frame 05 and its glass, show only those actors, and then align everything as we need. Let me grab the top view first this time. And grab the glass piece and line it up. Let me zoom in on the very far edge here so that we can zoom this in and snap it to the corner here. That has that aligned very nicely, and it looks like that's perfect in the uh, side and front views as well. So there we have two pieces which will act as good building blocks. So if we bring everything back in now, let me start with the curved piece. And the first cur curved angle I want to hit is this side on the edge of the mesh. So I'm going to begin by rotating this 90 degrees. So right about 112, 116. 90 degrees, and then moving it into place. So we find we need to find a good area where we not only fit around this mesh, but also where we don't actually push the glass through the uh, the wall on the side. And looking at it from here, we also need to get it aligned properly vertically. Now I think one convenient thing about this mesh is it's 256 units tall, and the room is 512 units. So if we stack this mesh one on top of the other, it should align very nicely inside the room. Because already looking at it, we've got it aligned to the uh, ceiling. But the next axis we're worried about is this far edge. Looking at the edge now, if we look at this door, we're trying to fill in this wall space, which fits inside this brush, which means I need this wall piece to center up on it. Then we need the other side to be far enough out of the way, but not too far into the wall. I don't want it aligned so close that it interferes with this grating, so what I might do is move it just eight units out, just so that we have some of it fitting through the, the wall. So we actually lose a little bit of the frame into the wall, but we have the glass significantly on the inside. So I think that's actually looking really good. And now that we have the uh, corner locked down, we can fill this area with, uh, with the uh, square mesh. So we can go back down, grab our square mesh, and notice what happened when I tried to select on the glass. It actually selected through and grabbed a wall texture on the side. And what's up with that is that the, um, this glass mesh is one polygon thick, 
and it almost acts as though it's one-sided. The only thing that gives it a visible two-sided nature is the material itself, which means for the moment we can only select it from one side. But knowing that we'll select both the glass mesh and the frame mesh, let's move them up in Z so that they match the uh, ceiling. Let me zoom in on a little bit, make sure that that's lined up. And now let's look at its positioning. And at first it looks like we'll need to do some rotation. So let me grab rotation and take it 90 degrees, maybe down. And then align it. Now here we're going to run into a case where we need to get an exact alignment between the two. And another thing I'd like to do is I don't want to um, scale this mesh out too much because we'll lose a lot of detail and basically just be covering the opening with a sheet of glass. Right. What I want to do is actually duplicate this. So for this space between the wall and the corner piece, I want to actually have two of these meshes. So that means I need to do a little bit more complicated of a measurement. Really, it's not that bad. I just need to get the f total distance but divide that by two before it applying it to 256 since we're going to have two of these meshes. So let's see, let me grab, let me reduce the selection a little bit. Let me grab just one of the frames, the doorway, this mesh, show only these actors so I know we need to fill this area. So the first number I need is going to be how far apart are these two? If I measure that's 352 units. That means if we divide that by two, each frame needs to fill half of this number. So 352 divided by 2 is 176 apiece. So times 256 means a scale of 0.6875. Let's copy that. Let's grab the door mesh and make sure we're careful to select the glass along with it. Then apply a scale in Y of 0.6875. And then we should be set up. I'm actually going to stick this side over here. And the reason I'm aligning the mesh, this mesh on this side, is because the way I've got the glass working right now, I can select it from the inside of this room, and I want to keep that effect. Uh, of course, because if we go out on the outside, we can't select it because it'll select through on the wrong side of the polygon. So we'll select both of these, and then I'll duplicate by rotating 90 degrees. So we'll hold Alt, swing that around, and we have a piece that swings nicely into place against this doorway. Very nice. Now, one thing that I will note here is that on the right side, the glass is easily selectable. But because we rotate it 180 degrees, this glass is no longer easily selectable. We have to go to the other side. And that could become a bit of an irritation where we're trying to select a bunch of things for duplicating. So what I'll do is I'll take the glass on this side, and I'll scale it in X by negative 1. And in doing that, I've just flipped the glass around so it's selectable from both sides. Very nice. Or uh, selectable from the same side, rather. Right. So now we know how we want to align this piece. Let's bring all of our meshes back and start working our way around the room aligning meshes. Now, before I can put a straight section in between here, I need to know where the next curved section is going to be. So let me grab our existing curved section and duplicate it. Let's hold Alt and move it over about to the other corner. And let's also rotate it 90 degrees. So right about there. And then we need to be a little bit careful with the uh, placement because we have the same considerations as before. I want to move it into the wall just a little bit, but not so far that the center glass line would get pushed into the wall. Then for the other side, let's see, how far out do we need it? We need it far enough out that it matches up. So what I'm going to do, I need to find and make sure that in X, we're at the same position as the other wall piece, but I don't know exactly where that's going to be, so momentarily let me constrain to Y, move these in so that they're right up against each other, then move an X so that they're aligned properly, and then move them back. I probably should have done that before I aligned in Y here, because now we've got to find the right space. But, I mean, that wasn't very hard. We'll just drag that over yeah. eight units over into the wall. And that gives us our second curve piece. Now we have an open area that we can fill with straight meshes. So let's grab both of these and their respective glass pieces, and let's duplicate them. I'm going to switch over to rotation and rotate... 90 degrees, and I'm going to rotate clockwise. And the reason I'm rotating clockwise is that should leave the selectable side of the glass on this side of the room. So let's move these into place, and then we can find a, a convenient scale for them. So moving them, I'll just kind of eyeball them kind of into the center. And I didn't really mean to deselect them, so let me grab these back. It does give me a chance to prove that the glass is on the right side of the uh, meshes. So we'll slide that somewhere in there for now. And now let's grab all the relevant meshes for setting up this scale. 
show only those meshes, and find what kind of numbers we're looking for. Let's measure from mesh to mesh. We've got a desired uh, gap of 456 units. Now, of course, there's two meshes, so we need to take half of that. So 456 divided by 2 is 228. That divided by 256 is a scale of some rather large number, which I'm just going to copy. And we'll select all these meshes again, both the windows, both of the straight frames, and we'll paste in a scale of 0.89 something or other and let Unreal Ed handle the rounding. Now if we try to move these into place, move right up on them, and it looks like I'm going to have to drop the drag grid down to 4 because we're kind of mm -hmm. overlapping on that one side. So let me momentarily grab view, grab our drag grid, and set it to 4. And in doing that, we can snap very nicely to the very edge. Very nice. Very so nice. let's put our drag grid back to 8. Since so far, 8's been really convenient for working with these uh, wall pieces. So that has half of the wall now. Let me bring the meshes back. And we can worry about this last wall piece. So once again, I could duplicate. And duplicate by rotating. And again, 90 degrees. Um, clockwise, so that we keep that selectable side of the glass facing into the level. And now we can move up to the far edge. And I'll line it up. And we might actually have to drop back to four for a minute to get that to uh, align properly. It's kind of halfway in between. Mm -hmm. So once again, let's grab a drag rate of four momentarily, snap that over, maybe move it back just a little. And drag rate. I should probably just leave it four for a while because I've got a feeling we're going to end up needing that here. Because looking at the side now, we've got this um, BSP that kind of tapers back. And these um, wall pieces are extending a little bit too far off to the side. So what I want to do is kind of catch this outer angle. Let me go above the level just a little bit. Or I could even look down from the top. We've got this angle we want to hit. And that's represented by one of these brushes. As a matter of fact, if I hide static meshes by hitting W, you can see that it would be nice to have the wall pieces end right at that angle. So in order to get a good view of what's going on, let me grab, let's see, these guys. Because I know I have that edge, I, I want to keep that edge, so I can select just these two meshes. And if I can grab that one BSP brush, show only those actors, and now I know exactly how long I want to measure for. So from this side up to the edge of that brush is... Scrolling 360 units. So let's see here. We've got 360 units for two brushes. Should be 180 units. Divided by 256 is a scale of 0.7 and some numbers. So let's go back. Let's grab just the relevant meshes. Uh, which is, should be pretty easy. You just select everything and then deselect the brush. Then apply the scale from calculator. Then bring everything back so I can align it. Really, I guess I should have included this curved mesh because I don't want to have everything in the way. So we'll go back to just showing those, and then I should be able to line everything up. So let's grab these meshes. I should have included the brush too, but hopefully I've got everything set up. Zoom in a little bit, get this aligned. And then bring everything back, and let's look at how that's working. So there we go, on that corner, very, very nice. nicely aligned. So it goes right up to the edge and then stops. And looking at it, that gives us a very nice three-quarters of the room walled in. Mm -hmm. Now I want to have the same wall extend all the way to the floor. So what I want to do now is select all of the meshes that make up this wall. And I've already got some of them selected. Really, the only pieces I need selected are each unique piece. That means one of the straight sheets of glass, one of the straight frames, one of the curved frames, and one of the curved sheets of glass. With those meshes selected, I can right-click on them and say Select Matching Static Mesh in this class. And that grabs all of our wall system all the way around. Very nice. So let's go to, let's see what would be the most convenient view, probably a front view. And let me up the drag grid to make this a little bit easier to see. Let's up this to 16 now. And let me hold Alt and duplicate the entire wall system until it snaps onto the floor. And now because we took care to make a room that was 512 units high, and we placed a 256 unit mesh into it, we have a very nice even alignment. And that's also why I took time to measure out the floor and make sure that the floor is placed at the exact center of the room, because now these floor walkways align to the seam between the walls, which makes it look like we have one wall on the top, one wall on the bottom, and we don't see the seam. Mm -hmm. 
So that's working very well, except for this side, because we've got a doorway that's in a different place from the top. So we need to move some of these meshes over. Let me grab the one on the far left and just slide it out of the way over into this gap. And let me take a look at this mesh that's closer to the door now. We have a mesh that extends halfway through the door because we have a very narrow gap we're trying to bridge. So let's bring the number of actors down to just these few in between. And let me show only those actors so that I can measure the, uh, the length we need. On this side we have the end of the curve piece, and on this side we have the door. And between those we have the desired length we'd like to achieve. So let me drag out a measurement from... You know, it looks like I only need my drag grid lower in order to get a, a good measurement. Let me drop it down to 8. And with a drag grid of 8, let's see what we can do. That looks like it's about 112 units across. So 112 divided by 256 gives us 0.4375. If we apply that to the door and its glass piece, we get a mesh aligned to the other side, but it should be easy to snap back into place, Very and we nice. have a nice alignment on that. Let's bring everything back so we can take a look at the other doorway. And let's grab, let's see, convenient things would be that doorway, the mesh, its glass, and a brush on the far side so that we can use for alignment. So let's grab this one wall piece show only these actors and figure out what measurement we're looking for. So here I've got just the edge of the doorway, the edge of the brush, and if I measure, and didn't mean to scroll, so measure between both of these, we've got 280 units we're trying to achieve. So 280 units divided by 256 gives a scale of 1.9 and some numbers. So let's now grab the mesh and its glass. I can just select around all of them, or well, all two of them. Mm -hmm and paste in the scale, move this over so it fits to the doorway, and now fits to the wall, Very let's nice. bring everything back, and we have a doorway filled in there. We have walls filling in all sides of the room, so that's looking really nice. And unless I'm missing anything, let me make sure that I've got glass panels in all of these that I've I missed I think any. you've got it in all of them, actually. Yeah, everything is looking good. Mm -hmm. And surely we've got glass panels on the top if we duplicate it from mm -hmm. that set. So we've now got a wall piece, a wall that runs all the way around. And looking at it, we could maybe fill in this gap here. Um, let's grab one of those um, pillars that we were using on the other side. Because, I mean, it looks like this wall now is almost complete. We've got a wall that divides the two rooms. Mm -hmm. Um, but we have one gap, and that is on this side of the door. We shouldn't have anything between because everything's lined up nicely and scaled so that there should be no gaps there. Let's find a good pillar to use there. I think there was some in the uh, LT trims package, the ones we've used to fill the gap in the uh, elevator section. Maybe if we get, grab something like railing 1C, let's drop it into place right over this mesh here. And then we'll probably need to rotate it to line it up. Let's see, X. So let's grab over here. And I'm going to have to go by the little display in the bottom, so that's 90 degrees. Positioning that here. And it probably wouldn't look too bad if it overlapped just a little bit on mm -hmm. the sides. So we've got the base. Actually, it needs to be moved in because we're looking at this door, which is actually over here. I don't know. Maybe rotating would help. And find a good way to rotate it. Because that's... Hang on, I need the... Uh, let me see if I can grade the, drop the drag grid to 4. Maybe hide out some meshes that I don't need here for the moment. Show only the relevant things for aligning. Because it is kind of convenient that I can just snap that together. And for the height, that's almost too convenient. Because mm -hmm. what is this... I mean, not that it's relevant. I'm just curious to see what the height is. We've actually got a height of... Because I remember we had to scale the doorway mesh. And we're looking at about 256 tall. Oh, that's right. The door mesh was only like 240. That's why we had to scale it. But, I mean, that's that's looking kind of nice there. Mm -hmm. Let me bring all the meshes back and see what that looks like. Yeah, I like that because that way we have that gap completely filled on that side. And I think that completely finishes... The wall between the two rooms, it carries the wall nicely across all of the curved pieces of the walkway. 
And with that, I think that's everything we needed to add for this section of static meshes. Excellent. Fantastic job. And with that, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.